Hey guys, and welcome back to the STEM channel. I'm Steph Evs, and this week I'm starting a new segment uh, that I don't know really what I'm going to call it yet. Topic talk. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to be talking about specific topics that have been requested. And what's the topic this week? Well, after the dress fiasco a couple of weeks ago, I got a request to do a talk about the science behind optical illusions and their effect on the brain. So that's what we'll be focusing on this week. So basically, my game plan here is to step through three different types of optical illusions and discuss a little bit about what causes each one. The first optical illusion that I'm going to talk about is called an afterimage. An afterimage occurs when you look at a very bright image, and when you look away, you still see the image in some form. Now, there are two types of afterimages. The first one is called a negative afterimage. This occurs when you look at a very bright image, and then when you look away, you basically see the photo negative of it. Here's an example of a negative afterimage. All right, focus your eyes on the center of this image and keep staring. Make sure to not let your eyes go blurry while you're staring. Now, what you're looking at here should be a fairly familiar looking image. It's just the American flag with the colors reversed. Keep staring, keep staring, just a little bit longer. There, did you see it? Did you see the red, white, and blue? So why exactly does this happen? Well, your eyes have photoreceptors called rods and cones, and when you're looking at a very bright image, they become overstimulated and lose sensitivity. New evidence also suggests that your cerebral cortex has something to do with this, since that's the part of the brain that deals with perception. Now, when you're looking at an overstimulating image, the image keeps getting moved to different parts of your retina via tiny little eye movements called microsaccades. Now, if the image is too large or your eye is too steady, the microsaccades won't be able to move the image fast enough to fresh parts of your retina. Eventually, your rods and cones will run short on photopigments, which will then eventually cause the brain signals to decrease. An everyday situation in which this happens is, say, if you walk inside after being outside on a very bright day, especially if there's snow on the ground. Your eyes are trying to adjust using neural adaptations in the occipital lobe of your brain. Basically, your eyes and brain are trying to keep your vision consistent with lighting situations that are varying. Now, this kind of scenario actually plays a little bit of a role in the dress explanation. I'll uh, link to the video right about here so you can go check that out. But basically, due to the really crappy Instagram filter, your eyes aren't sure how to adjust to the dimness of the photo, so some people perceive it differently. Another everyday example of this is if somebody blinds you with a camera flash and then you see those little colored spots blurring in your vision. Now, negative afterimages typically show up with three opposing sets of colors, red and green, blue and yellow, and black and white. So if you see something really bright green and you look away, you might see it as magenta on your afterimage. Here's an example of an illusion that takes advantage of these opposing colors. All right, hang with me, folks. This is another long one. Now, just keep staring at the black dot in the center of the screen. While it may not be inherently obvious what this image is, it's still a pretty cool one. Just hang in there for about another seven more seconds. Keep staring. Keep staring. There. What a pretty color image. Oh, wait. No. Blink your eyes a couple of times. And now it's black and white. Now, the second type of afterimage is a positive afterimage, which, as you probably guess, is just about the exact opposite of a negative image, where you see the image exactly as it was when you look away. Now, one big difference is these are very, very brief. They only last about half a second, and typically they're followed up by a negative afterimage. For example, if any of you knuckleheads watching have totally disobeyed your mother and looked directly into the sun and then looked into a dark space immediately afterwards, you first see the white orb of the sun before it switches over to a probably colored orb. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please do not step outside and try this. Just wait for somebody to blind you again with a camera flash and then look at a dark area. You'll get about the same effect. Now, scientists aren't really 100% sure about what causes this, but one hypothesis is that there's a signal delay from the time when you stop looking at an image to when the time your brain stops receiving it. The second type of optical illusion that we'll discuss is called the corn sweet illusion. This occurs when there's some sort of boundary in an image that messes with your perception of color. And here's an example. Now, we're definitely not looking at 50 shades of gray here, but you're probably thinking you're seeing at least two, right? Well, if you widen the boundary in between the two panels, now they look pretty much the same. Probably because they are. Now, the explanation behind this is that when your brain detects the edge of a shape, it uses this boundary to impart information about the surrounding areas. In this case, the gray fields on either side of the line. This occurs because of the way the nerve impulses travel through the visual cortex of your brain. Now, this process is twofold. Your retina interprets the image based on luminance profiles that it's familiar with. After that, the image is interpreted in your brain using basically identical codes. There, your cortex takes that data, integrates it, and basically comes to the same conclusion as your retina. Basically, your brain is interpreting the image based on what it would expect to see. The final optical illusion that we'll be discussing is called the Hermann grid, and this is what it looks like. 
Now, what you might notice when you're looking at this illusion is if you're not looking directly at one particular intersection of the lines, it may look dark gray, while if you're focusing directly on it, it turns back to white. One theory used to explain this process is called lateral inhibition. Lateral inhibition describes the ability of an excited neuron to reduce the activity of its neighbors. A lot like that really annoying kid in class that never stops talking and nobody around him can ever get any work done. If you're watching this in a classroom and you're trying to figure out which kid that is and you can't figure it out, it's probably you. However, rather than the principal's office, these cells hang out in the cerebral cortex and thalamus of the brain, where they make up the lateral inhibitory networks. Now, when you're looking at the grid, your retinal ganglion cells are gathering data from photoreceptors scattered across your retina or your receptive field. Now, in the middle of this receptive field, one particular photoreceptor may sense the brighter luminance in the lines or the intersections on the grid, and they excite their neural ganglion cells. Now, since we have one guy getting super, super excited, the photoreceptors will inhibit the surrounding ganglion cells. This inhibition is what causes the dark spot at the center of the intersection when you're not looking directly at that particular intersection. Now, like I said, this is just a theory and there are some holes in it. For example, as you can see from this image, if the lines are wavy, it doesn't have the same effect. No dark spots at the intersections. Now, these are just a few of the many, many optical illusions that exist in the world. Some of them we don't have full explanations for, such as the Munker white illusion shown here. In the Munker white illusion, you have horizontal lines of different colors with gray lines spliced in between. Now, it may not look like those gray lines are the same color, but they are for all three instances. You can check out the illusions that I discussed along with several others and their respective explanations at the link down below in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this video stimulating, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you like science -y stuff, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I put out videos every Saturday to cover what happened this week in STEM news, and I think I'm going to keep this as a regular segment on Wednesdays, although it's going to be kind of a grab bag at first. I'm really not sure if I'm going to stick with just topic talks on this day, but we'll see. So if you have any topics that you'd like me to discuss on topic talk or whatever the heck this is going to be called, feel free to tweet them at me at at 43 on Twitter. And that's pretty much it. So thanks again for watching, guys. Go forth and have a wonderful week, and I will see you on Saturday for Twice Tim.